This is the redesigned 2020 Ford Explorer and it comes with all sorts of driver assist features and safety tech that I'm going to show you right now. In this video, I'll show you how to use some of these driver assist features like the Ford Copilot 360, everything that comes on the different trim levels, and we're going to go for a test drive and see just how well they work. Now before we get started, I want you to know I have a full detailed review of this Explorer with all the features and an actual test drive and a night video of this as well. Let's get started. Standard on every single Explorer is going to be what they call Ford Copilot 360, which is a number of features. First is a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection and automatic emergency braking. It uses a camera up front and a sensor down here to brake if needed, and you can adjust that if you want. That also includes blind spot indicators in the mirror and rear cross traffic alert. So if you're backing up, the blind spot sensors will let you know if someone is coming that you might run into. That also includes a lane keeping system which helps to prevent you one from going out of your lane it can prevent you from actually exiting the lane or just alert you if you're leaving your lane and then there's the automatic high beam system which i'll show you a little bit later another standard feature is going to be the reverse sensing system which is basically just radar sensors in the back if you're backing up close to something it's going to beep at you and let you know if you're close then once you get to the limited you get a front sensing system you've got a couple little little spots, little sensors in the front for the same thing to beep if you get too close. Also on the Limited is a 360 camera system. So we have a camera right here, a camera in the back, and then a camera under each mirror. And I'll show you what that looks like on the inside. And another thing with the Limited is you get range sensing windshield wipers. Using that camera in the front, it'll automatically turn the wipers on and you can adjust the speed if you want or just use regular wiper controls. But I really like this feature and it honestly is really nice when it's raining. Now another thing standard on the limited trim but optional on the lower XLT trim is the Ford Copilot 360 Assist Plus. That'll include adaptive cruise control and I'll show you that in a little bit, evasive steering assist which can actually aid you in steering to avoid a collision, speed sign recognition also using the camera, and voice activated touchscreen navigation on the inside. And then once you get to the ST trim, you get the Active Park Assist 2.0, which can parallel park and perpendicular park and even help you get out of the spot. And I'll show you that in a little bit too. On the ST, you also get the reverse brake assist. So if you're backing up and let's say that you don't see something or it doesn't let you know of something and you're maybe going to run into something, it can automatically brake for you to help avoid a collision. And then on the top platinum trim, which we have right here, you get the adaptive headlamps. So that means they can swivel side to side and help you corner at night. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at some of these interior features. So first of all, one thing you'll wanna know on this left stock, you see this button on the left? That is for your lane keeping system. And that will change your display in the middle here. So if it's like this, your lane keeping system is off. If it's like that, it's on. And then it will show you in real time whether or not it recognizes your lanes and when you have radar cruise going, you'll see a car and the distance between you and that car in front of you. The radar cruise is used with this panel up here. So you can turn your cruise on and set it and resume and minus or plus like normal. You can even plus and minus five miles per hour at a time if you want. This is to adjust the distance with your radar cruise between uh, further to near. And then this is your lane centering if your vehicle has it. And we'll go through this in a little bit. On the right stock, you can control your automatic wipers. So it's gonna be in your off setting, and then you can have automatic or you can adjust it and you can adjust the frequency of the automatic with that as well. Plus you can wash those front and back cameras by pushing the stock forward or pulling it backwards. And that's something you don't always see. To access your 360 camera, there's a nice button right here. Very easy to use. My only complaint is that it only shows up on that part of the screen, which is kind of crazy. I wish it was, Taken. I wish it would take up this whole screen, but I'm just parked right now and then automatically it shows me what's in front of me and then next to the vehicle. And these dotted lines are really nice for parking spots. They help you kind of get in the middle of your parking spot. And if I go ahead and put it in reverse, you can see we have the dynamic lines on this side. You can still see your dotted lines over there. And we have our parking sonar indicators right here. And you can change the view as well so you can just have your backing up you can have kind of a wider angle backing up view right there as well or you can go back to your standard view and if i go ahead and get close to this tree okay i just got close enough to the tree to where it started beeping and there we go 
it'll automatically show up whether you're in your camera or not and then we can see that you can see the tree in front of you and you can turn your parking sonars off or on with this button and those parking sonars will work for the front and the back just the same now a lot of you are going to want to adjust your uh, features over here so you'll go to settings and then driver assist and then it'll show you all these different features that we have right here so first of all let's go with cruise control you have normal which is the regular cruise control the vehicle won't slow down or brake or speed up or anything like that if you want that adaptive and then intelligent is where it will actually read the speed limit and adjust according to that so adaptive will slow down and speed up according to the vehicles in front of you intelligent will actually change the speed for you and recognize the speed limit signs and adjust that on the fly and just for this sake i'm going to show you the intelligent today so you can plus or minus miles per hour with your intelligent cruise control the lane keeping system you can adjust this too and one thing i've noticed with the screen is it is a little laggy sometimes so for the lane keeping mode you can have it just alert you you can have it aid you or you can have it alert and aid you in back into your lane and like i said use your left stock next to your steering wheel to turn it off or on you can even adjust the alert intensity high normal and low and i'm going to have it on high well let's actually put it on normal for today's sake same with your pre-collision system you can decide whether or not you actually let it actively brake for you and i've never been in a vehicle that's actually done that same with the evasive steering assist and then you can adjust the sensitivity here as well so it's nice that you can adjust all of this uh, and turn things off if you want the speed sign recognition will go with our intelligent cruise control and then your rear view camera you can turn off the parking aid like the parking sonars if you want to you can turn off your blind spot indicators if you want you can even have a trailer blind spot going if you're if you're towing trailer sway control your cross traffic alert to where if you're backing up it'll let you know if a vehicle is coming behind you and alert you same with the reverse brake assist if you're backing up and you don't stop it can stop for you and you can turn that off or on and then driver alert down here can notify you if it doesn't think you're paying enough attention all right y'all so you can't see me yet but this is our little guinea pig vehicle parked on the side of the road for our active park assist 2.0 and the thing about it is this road has a slight curve in it so i'm not sure if this will adapt to that or not all right now to activate this you push your parking button right down below use your signal and then pull up next to a vehicle and it will tell you when to stop there spot space found stop put it in neutral and then you push and hold and it's going to tell you on the screen your parking button release the brake and here we go it's going to do everything on its own you can shift to cancel it or hit the brakes and this is a little scary oop are we touching the curb and there we go and it's pulling me forward a little bit now and it just stopped and put us in park perfect look at that and it can help you even get out of your spot and then for the parallel park out you push your button again use your signal and we shift into neutral and it tells you everything on the screen it will stop for a vehicle behind you i just didn't elect to do that because i don't necessarily trust it yet but we push and hold that button again release the brake and watch it go backing us up a little bit and it's going to pull us out perfect look at that so it'll back you up to the vehicle behind you as close as it can go to give you space to pull out all right let's go ahead and get on a drive with this 2020 ford explorer and first of all we're going to be on a highway road i'm going to show you some of the intelligent adaptive cruise control and lane keeping system right away and you'll see how it adjusts to the speed limit so i'm going to have my lane keeping system activated right off the bat i'm going to turn my cruise control on as well and the last sign it recognized was 40 miles an hour so once i start my cruise it's going to automatically go to 40 miles an hour and of course you can change that and then hopefully you'll be able to see this screen a little bit as we go but right now you can see each of those little blocks there's not a car there right now but i'll have it on the third setting out of four 
for distance. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm gonna hit just resume, and it's gonna put it at 40 miles an hour for this cruise, which was a speed limit back there. We'll see when it adjusts and when it adapts in a little bit. And I don't have the lane centering on, so it's gonna let me veer, and it just indicated yellow down there and kind of bumped me over. Now we are coming up on people up here. This will take you all the way down to a stop as well if you let it and accelerate after that. So I have it on four bars now to stay behind this vehicle. There's a 55 mile an hour speed limit sign. Right now it's at 40 and it just changed to 55. And it's going to accelerate on its own. So that's pretty interesting. I have, I don't think I've driven an intelligent cruise control like that where it actually will adjust the speed depending on the speed limit. Now, I'm gonna make this one bar away from the vehicle in front of me and we probably won't actually catch up to them. We'll get out on the interstate and see how it does passing people and all of that. But I just turned my lane centering on and there's a green icon, a steering wheel, and the lanes will be green. And the steering wheel is just barely moving a little bit. It's doing this on its own. And after a little while, it will tell you to grab the wheel. But for the most part, it just drives itself. And I don't recommend you doing this. Keep your hands on the wheel. I'm just showing you. Now I'll see how it does around this corner. Look at that. Driving itself. And it's keeping a distance right here. This is one bar. Speed limit 45. And it just changed down there too. So it's gonna automatically slow me down, all on its own. This car is gonna move over, and it slowed down, and it's gonna speed up for me. There you go, it's as easy as that. It's really slick, really smooth. Now if you have your vehicle in the intelligent cruise control mode and it is slowing you down when you don't want it to, you might just want to put it in regular adaptive mode or just normal. Now this is a sharp corner. Let's see how well this does. Holy cow. It did pretty well. Wow. And it kind of carried out through that corner a little bit more, but I get a little nervous going around corners like that, but this will turn the wheel quite a bit. Now one thing that this won't do is recognize the stop sign and stop. So you have to stop. So always be paying attention. Now, this 10-speed transmission, for the most part, has been smooth. There are some times where it does have some weird behavior, kind of indecisive on gears, takes a little while to downshift sometimes. But for the most part, I don't think many of you, I don't think hardly any of you will complain about how it drives. The one thing I do have to complain about, though, are these 21-inch wheels. That's for sure. I mean, the ride does get harsh over some bumps and some impacts, but I'll talk more about that in the full review. Now the speed limit is 30. It recognizes the sign, I hit resume, and it's got me going 30. Lane centering is on. So it's crazy that this lane centering works at low speeds too. And it's telling me to keep my hands on the steering wheel. If you just give it a little bit of feedback, that will go away or you can hit the okay button. But like I said, keep your hands on the wheel. We just passed a 40 mile an hour speed sign and it just sped me up. Now we are going to get on the interstate and hopefully uh, get behind some people. Now the power plant in here, this Platinum has. A lot of power, that's for sure. Now on this service road, speed limit is 60. I'm gonna go ahead and engage that, the cruise control. So lane centering is still on. Cruise control is set to 60 and definitely a little funky there and the crazy thing was the speed limit is 55 right here now but it recognized 70 miles an hour on the interstate speed sign and then it went just back to 55 so you do got to pay attention to that and sometimes it doesn't always recognize the speed limit signs accurately so i just got onto the interstate and i don't know where it got this but it just took me down from 70 to 60 even though the speed limit is still 70. So this is definitely not perfect and I'm getting passed up now. But I'm gonna go ahead and move it up to 70. 
because you can override it, of course. And then there's a car coming up over here and my blind spot indicator just came on. And if you signaled, it would alert you and tell you not to go because there's someone in your blind spot. I'm gonna speed up a little bit just so you can see how well it reacts if I get over. So we're going 69, I'm gonna use my signal. And pretty much once you start to get away from behind that vehicle, it starts to accelerate pretty well on its own. If it doesn't accelerate quick enough for you, you can always get on it some. Now I'm gonna get in behind these people fairly quickly and we'll see how quickly it slows us down. So it's slowing me down to keep the one bar distance between me and the people in front of me. I'm gonna increase that to three bars and you'll see it slow us down even more. So this is pretty responsive in terms of keeping its distance, accelerating when it's supposed to accelerate, braking when it's supposed to brake. If someone pulls in front of you right away, it can be a little fast in terms of how quickly it hits the brakes, but it's not as jerky and crazy as some other vehicles are. And it practically drives itself with this lane centering technology. And like I said, you can turn all of this off, have normal cruise control, no lane keeping stuff, no automatic braking, none of that stuff if you don't want it to. So look ahead, if I turn, 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 you can see the lights move a little bit and then kind of whip back to center. So we'll see how those do in some turns in a little bit. And now we're about to get on our dark road. So those headlights did swivel right there. Let me go ahead and turn the high beams on, automatic high beams. And they are on, high beams on, and they turned off, thankfully, right after that vehicle straightened out. And we'll see if they turn back on. And they did, that was just right away, right off the bat. It's really pretty bright straight up ahead, which is always good. So I'm gonna turn them off and I wanna see how these cornering lights do, or these adaptive lights. And right away off the bat, I can see they kind of turned up towards where I'm driving. So they do help out in that scenario. At low speeds, I don't think they necessarily do that much going very far, but they did help with that. So what do y'all think of the Ford Copilot 360 and its intelligent cruise control? Leave your comments down below. So what do you think of all these driver assist features in the Ford Explorer? The good news is if you don't like any of this stuff, you can turn it off or just simply not use it. But if you do like using this stuff, first of all, this can actually help lower your insurance rates because of the pre-collision system, things like that that help you avoid an accident. But it's also fairly easy to use and learn. But just remember, always keep your eyes on the road and always be in control. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out the full review of this vehicle. Check out some of these other videos below. I have a full review and a night review aside from this video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.